Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another TossCast podcast. It's been a while since I've done a regular TossCast podcast. However, with the guest I have on, on the show tonight, it is anything but regular. I think it is, quite frankly, terrific and spectacular, I dare say. We have, of course, my good friend, my podcast partner. We have Spatry from Spatry's Cup of Linux, and... Back by popular demand, we have Jordan Twill this week in Linux. Yay! <laughs> thank you, thank you. So, Jordan, fill us in. How busy have you been? Uh, pretty ridiculously busy. Uh, in the last couple of weeks, I have gone on a family vacation with uh, 11 people. Uh, took my, my family through four Disney parks. Um, been working on the house. Uh, quit my job and started a new job, and been putting out two videos a week on the XDA Developers Channel. That's busy. So I have yeah. now. I, I have to ask you, Twill. You went down to to the theme parks. Did you Did you go see the Terminator show? Did Did you see my cousin? Uh, <laughs> no, I think I may have been at the wrong park. <laughs> uh, I have to think for a second. Wait, wait. His battery is like. Uh, oh wait, I'm sorry. I took my boy down there once. That's actually at yeah, Universal. You were down at Disney, right? Oh, yes. Yeah, but I don't oh. even think they're running the Terminator anymore. Uh, this is like three or four years ago. Oh, they got rid of my cousin. I will terminate Disney. Goodbye. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but uh, Spatry, what's up? Uh, well, you know what? It, I I found this interesting snippet, and I figured I'd share it with you guys. Okay. Uh, Adobe's open source code editor for web developers. Uh, there's more surprise for Linux users from the closed source software vendors. After Microsoft unexpectedly updated Skype recently, mm -hmm. Adobe has announced details for its source code editor for web developers. Unlike other Adobe products, it will be open source distributed under the MIT license. Now, um, I have a video that's going up later tonight where I'm actually going to discuss the differences between uh, the different licensings that are available, such as the GNU General Public License, the um, uh, Lesser GPL License, the BSD License, the MIT License, and then, of course, the infamous EULA. So you'll definitely want to check that out. But that's really interesting, and I did get to have a look at some screenshots. It's still in development, so you can't download it just yet. Okay. You know, you said... I couldn't help but internally snicker at BS, of course, D license, but <laughs> I won't even go there. We'll s <laughs> shut up. But uh, no, but speaking of uh, funny news items, uh, Twill, did you catch last week's uh, Linus Torvalds giving his little speech with the Linux love finger thing? Did you? Uh, I caught part of it, yeah. I didn't get to see the whole video, but I caught the, the pertinent part. <laughs> Okay, well, basically, he, it, it was a question-answer session somewhere in Finland at a symposium or some kind of a college or a center, and yeah. a nice young lady asked the question of why it's so hard to get, uh, how shall I say, cooperation from NVIDIA. And Mr. Torvalds replied, well, that's the exception, not the rule. Most, you know, most folks are, are trying to be cooperative, except for <laughs> NVIDIA. And he pointed to the camera I gave what this battery what do you call this battery the finger the rose uh, finger yeah the wild irish ro yeah the wild yeah. finished rose yeah okay so we gave that and he wasn't done to put a little more spicing on the uh, on the cake he told Nvidia to basically well well the world the the word starts with f I'll I'll, I'll let you use your imagination but <laughs> I just howled at that but then just a few days ago Spatry and I did a uh, bonus or like an update to that and Spatry, what was that news item with China and, 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 and NVIDIA? Yeah, um, well the thing is um, NVIDIA lost a Chinese contract because uh, it literally would have cost um, money that the Chinese government just did not want to spend 
on uh, additional hardware or software or code or something like that to get to get NVIDIA working with their system. So what they decided to opt for was the AMD ATI architectures. Uh, and I think this is for uh, education purposes. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, well, I saw, I, saw, I saw a video of yours with the um, something about while you were driving, well, not driving, you were in the car, but you were playing with a Verizon tablet? So, yes, yes, that's one I put up uh, Monday night. That's the one. What do you, I, mm -hmm. I don't currently have a tablet. I've been toying around with the idea of buying one, but what, what, are your thoughts, what are your thoughts about the current state of tablets nowadays? I currently own a 10-inch uh, older, it's a ViewSonic G tablet. That's a, it was one of the first dual-core tablets to hit the market. Okay. Came with terrible, terrible software that the community has really just made it a, a much better device. Okay. Um, it's actually running ice cream sandwich, and I have no idea where it is because of the move. But, um, <laughs> okay. No. Oh, oh. Per personally, you've you've kind of got a bunch of different schools of tablet. You've got the 10-inch devices, the 7-inch devices, Wi-Fi, and always network connected, like 3G, 4G. Yeah. And it sort of depends on who you are as to what sort of tablet you're looking at. The uh, mm -hmm. Actually, I don't know if you all heard about it or not, but today started Google's I.O. conference. And at that conference, they announced a an official Google-branded uh, tablet, a 7-inch oh. tablet they're calling the Google Nexus or the Galaxy okay. Nexus. Uh, okay. Maybe it's just the Google Nexus. Okay. Um, Nexus 7. Uh, and it's got a quad-core Tegra 3 processor in it, uh, which kind of ironic going back to the NVIDIA thing. But, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's see, 1 gig of RAM, again, 7-inch seven, uh, seven screen, 1280 by 800, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, comes in an 8 or 16 gig version, and it's 200 bucks. That sounds like a good yeah. deal, yeah. right? Yeah. The, yeah, the, the big problem that I have with it, one, and it's not a big one, uh, doesn't have a rear-facing camera, and mm -hmm. two doesn't have any internet connectivity other than wireless. Mm. So if you wanted to take it on the road like I did with that Verizon tablet, you're kind of up a creek unless you have hotspot on your uh, cell phone. Mm. Yeah. It's kind of a trade-off price and what it has to offer, huh? Exactly. Uh, and for the most part, I mean, if you're on the road, most people will be fine with the cell phone. But yes. uh, I, I have to say that, that one that Verizon sent me, having it to have on the road for a, w a week was wonderful. Okay. Uh, even though the device itself was, it was not the the best thing I've ever used. It definitely got the job done. It was very responsive, and uh, the the data connectivity was okay. Okay. <laughs> Traveling, you, you're always gonna go sort of up and down, and we hit yeah. a lot of dead spots. But uh, when we had 4G, it was insanely fast, and when we didn't, it was usable. Mm. We were able to use it for GPS stuff mm. and whatever else came along, you know, hey, we need to, to listen to a song, or we need to check yeah. the, the price on blah, 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 or look up hotel reservations. Yeah. So, um, um, realistically, like I said, it sort of depends on what you're looking for as to what's out there. Um, keep in mind, RIM is still out there, too. I, I'm not the person that should be mentioning it, but I, <laughs> I, I do own the, uh, the BlackBerry Playbook, and I am a huge fan of the software that it runs. So that one's... Um completely like stable or runs smooth and it has everything that you need for yourself? Uh, the last one's a little bit debatable. Okay. It, it has everything I need to use it as a, a web browsing, email, uh, media type device. Um, it, will, it will not do Netflix and it doesn't mm. have any apps as the Android marketplace has because it's running RIM's own software. Um, all right. Give me a quick piece of advice. Say I'm in the market for one. I've never bought one. I mean, I know what they are. You pick one for me. The new Google tab or the playbook? Uh, between the Google tab or the playbook, the new Google tab. 200 okay. bucks. Uh, it, you, it's hard to do wrong with that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've, been, I've been waiting to see when that comes out to wait for the yeah. reports, you know, test reviews to see. But uh, for the price, even with its I would say minor shortcomings. That might be the one to look at if you want a good deal. It would be nice if it would have the capability of automatically syncing your Android phone with the apps back and forth. I don't know if that's even possible. Probably is. To some extent. Um, if you, When you're setting up your device, if you tell it to automatically back things up for you, a lot of times it will automatically reinstall the new apps on the new device, but I don't think it syncs. So if you install something on one, I don't think it does it to the other. But uh, on more than one occasion, I have reinstalled a device to completely reformat or reflash the device and okay. had it automatically start pulling down apps for me. Okay. That may be an ice cream sandwich thing. The, uh, the playbook that you have, do you use that often or just when you're in the mood? or? Uh, 
lately I haven't used any tablets much, but uh, I use it primarily when I'm uh, wanting to catch up on some some video or audio podcasts or if I want to watch something flash on YouTube because it does 1080p flash beautifully. I mean, okay. there's no lag. And the multitasking on it is really what sells it for me because I can be watching – the the uh, you know an actual 1080p flash video meaning the resolution not necessarily yes. Yes. You know, using that whole screen size but anyway uh, I can swipe up and open a game I can swipe up and open um, a media player I you know I'll have eight things running at the same time while capturing 1080p video and it wow. does not slow down it totally smooth down. so it's smooth exactly. yeah. Yeah. and that's because okay. it's it's not Linux it's not Java it's uh, based on Unix. It's a version of QNX, which is a very old, like from the 1970s Unix oh, kernel. Oh, okay. So it uh, it's all very proprietary, and I'm not a huge fan of that, but the performance that you see out of it is ridiculous. So the bottom line, it works. It nice. just works. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, it, it's a dual core, and it's performing. It's probably mm. performing better than this new quad-core Nexus is going to perform. Wow. Okay, but it doesn't have the apps to back it up. It doesn't have that, so really yeah, can. That's a real I, limiting factor there. I <laughs> did catch a news item. I'm just browsing the news yeah. here, and of course, when it comes to tablets, Apple is king. There's a quick thing off the wire that says your iPhone revenue hits 150 billion within five years. I guess that's a that is a prediction. Wow. Oh. Well, look, they make they make good products, you know, you know, between yeah. the iPhone and their iPad, they are the quality standard, and really for anybody. And of course, Microsoft, I think, is coming out. What's it called, Spatchy? They're the Surface, Surface. tablet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and of course, I cracked the joke. I guess the word Microsoft <laughs> Pit wouldn't work, so they thought of Surface. But uh, you know, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, you know, companies like Google and Microsoft, if they really want to put a dent in Apple, you know, to me. They need to come out with a tablet that is somehow unique, different. Okay, so so the pricing is good for the Google Nexus tab, whatever, two hundred bucks. That's that's going to be an attraction. But to really put a dent in Apple, that tablet has to have something so unique. So it needs that cool wow factor to drive. Well, that, that's someone. actually the one thing about the Nexus. Uh, along with the new Nexus tablet, they're rolling out uh, Jelly Bean, the brand new version of Android, which is focused on being the fastest one available and having lots and lots of new features. They've got something built in that's kind of similar to Siri, uh, okay. except it's a lot faster. They've got something they're calling Google Now, which uh, you ask it a question and it, it pulls up a card with an answer pretty much, like, oh. you know, what's the weather like here or who's the president of blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um, it pulls up like your favorite things. Like if you're into baseball, it'll pull up your favorite baseball teams and show you the upcoming games and scores and give you the ability okay. to buy tickets. Okay. Um, huh. I, I watched some of this at work today, so I, I caught a lot of it. Ah. So you but, think uh, it might be somewhat of a competitor to the iPad, maybe? Well, without the, uh, I guess if you're looking the Wi-Fi version versus Wi-Fi version, yeah, it sort of depends on the size that you prefer and. Okay. Uh, I could definitely see it being a competitor to the iPad if the iPad were smaller, or oh, that's right, yeah. especially against yeah. the uh, the Kindle Fire, the the Nook tablet, all of those smaller tablets that are being put right. out by the bigger retailers. Yeah, because the tablet, what it's a, it's a standard. The uh, the iPad is what a standard ten inch screen, if I recall. Uh, nine point six. Nine point six, and well, that's yeah. a little bit of difference, yeah. But maybe maybe people don't need it, need stuff need need a tablet that large. I mean, I don't know. Well, for for me personally, ten is a little bit too big. If you have a ten inch screen and you hold it in your hands uh, okay. in landscape mode, it's difficult to type, in my opinion, with your thumbs. If okay. you lay it down, you can type just fine. But okay. if you are holding it like a normal person holds a tablet, it's almost impossible. Yeah, Seven okay. inch for a normal person's hands is the perfect size to type on the entire screen. Okay, folks. Phone. Okay, well, hey, there's the best advice from Twill, the master of tablets himself. Go with the go with the seven inch, but. Uh, um, there was another piece of news. Okay, yeah. I have uh, one for you. All right. Well, I uh, found an interesting article here. While Apple punishes those who discover security holes in their iOS or Mac, Google rewards researchers and encourages them to discover yep. security holes so that they can make Chrome more secure. Google has paid around $11,500 to security researchers for finding security holes in the stable version of Chrome browser. Very interesting stuff indeed. And then uh, 
it, there's this other article that accompanies this where Apple punishes researcher uh, Charlie Miller for finding a potential security flaw. I would think they would be grateful for something like this so they can make their software better. Um, you know what? I just caught another caught another thing off the new boy this is ridiculous these lawsuits and litigation it says here yeah. uh, this is as of today this evening Apple gets okay. Samsung Galaxy sales blocked uh, yes my, my, I saw that one. yeah where does this I mean I'm not gonna read the whole thing it's kinda depressing but where does this end guys my goodness but something else the article went to go on to say that yeah. the Galaxy Tab 1001 yeah. is pretty much cl close to being an outdated product, even though yeah. uh, even though Samsung oh. is going to uh, fight this and okay. uh, get that ban removed. But, I mean, it, it's just ridiculous. And I think we're starting to see the birth signs of the patent system crumbling, you know, with all these little snippets of news coming out. You know, something's going to be happening with the, uh, with the patents. I, I, I believe within the next few years we're going to be seeing some major changes in the patent system. Yeah, I think we had talked about this tool. I wasn't sure if you were on the show, but I think it was me, uh, Spatry, and IG. We were talking about somehow that the patent system needs to be updated, tuned up, modified, dropped, you know, uh, something. Cause it's, it's At least the, the software patent side of things. The software yes, and I mean, yes. hardware designs, the way that they're giving patents out for hardware design is kind of ridiculous, too. That, that was actually one of the first patents that Apple had for the iPhone that got Samsung in a lot of trouble. I just caught another bit of, bit of news since, since you mentioned about the, the Google Nexus. Here it is here. Google Nexus 7 tab could heavily influence the Great Tablet Wars. It sounds like a movie sequel or the Great Tablet Wars. But the, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm kind of looking forward to the first reviews. I mean, like I said, I, know I don't currently have a tablet, but that might be my next toy. I have like two or three, you know, like laptops I have scattered here throughout the house that I use. But, um, well, I mean, I, look, I, th I think because it's Google and Android, this one will probably succeed probably right out of the box. I, I can't, I don't have any prediction in terms of sales. I think probably in terms of the new tablets, I think Microsoft Windows 8 tab, that might be the question. Because I think that is going to run, oh, I wrote it. That's going to run about five five hundred dollars. And mm -hmm. listen, if you have a choice between a five hundred Microsoft Windows 8 tablet, which I'm sure is going to look great, or an app, or an Apple iPad, at this point, as much as I like Windows 7, not Windows, 8, I think I'd have to go with the Apple iPad for the five hundred dollars. So it's just the, not the one thing I've yeah. heard about the uh, the Windows 8 tablets is the Windows 8 phone version and tablet version is supposed to have the same core as the Windows 8 desktop edition. Oh. Which means they should have a common code base that can run applications as well. So when you have an app that runs on Windows 8 desktop, it should also run, mm -hmm. at least in some form or fashion, on the tablet and phone versions. So, so that may actually be a good selling point for them. Because it would be, I would guess, more user-friendly, more... Um, well, more or just more, more cross-platform compatibility. If they can make right. it, and I think I've seen some things from them in the past where they'll sync up, like, what video is playing on your device will go to your Windows desktop or vice versa. Uh, okay. If they can do the same sort of thing with applications, you know, I'm running uh, a web browser, it immediately syncs over, and I know Chrome and Firefox can sort of do this now, but it's buggy for me. Uh, okay. But if they can make make your apps sync from one device to another without having to physically attach them, okay, that would uh, that would be a, a winner for a lot of people. Right. Yeah, but the thing is, uh, I read that I read an article, and I think uh, this was with you total <coughs> today, um, that uh, Microsoft is going to fix those tablets to where it will only run their Internet Explorer browser. You will not be able to install. Uh, Firefox oh, Opera, or uh, th that's Chrome where you're locked your out. Device. Yeah, yes, yeah. it's going to lock that, you that out. That won't last very long at all. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm sure there's going to be a number of hackers out there that'll yeah. bypass that. No, no, of course, there'll be do... there'll be legal battles, just like when they tried to to force IE with uh, with Windows by default. The the European Union stepped up and said, no, you can't do that. That's anti-competitive. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, but that's so. been years ago. Well, this, well, yeah, this yeah. is going to come and bite them. But that, that does come come back full circle to yeah. what I've always thought that Google really ought to do. Google has uh, their fingers in too many pies. They've got uh, Chrome OS, which works okay for what it does. Uh, it actually does the, you 
you know, leave one device and open another one up and it, it takes over and you start right where you left off. That's great. Uh, then you've got Android. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> then you've got Android that uh, you go from one device to the next and there's no continuity at all, but it has the, the app platform behind it. If there was a way for them to merge the two ideas, the mer- mm-hmm. merge the two platforms together to where you can go from your desktop to your laptop to your phone to your tablet and have everything be a seamless experience, you'd have a real, a real huge amount of happy customers mm-hmm. and an immediate uh, market share for the Linux platform. Um, I am a big, big fan of the of the Kiss method. You know, keep it yeah. simple, stupid, user friendliness, n- nothing. Nothing can compete with any product, whether it be, you know, a phone, a tablet, uh, a car, I mean, like even a toaster, you know, without getting too way out there. But, you know, if if something new comes out technology-wise and it's priced right and it's very user-friendly and unique, it's almost guaranteed to succeed because who doesn't want something that simple user-friendly and it has value meaning like it didn't cost you an arm and a leg when it doesn't have those combined features I think it's doomed to fail almost automatically because nowadays people have so many choices that they just don't have any patience for something that is shall I say substandard Uh, I know when I go shopping uh, you know if you know, like especially for technology stuff, you know, whether it's a, a cell phone or a laptop, you know, whatever. If, if, um, now, of course, I know more than most, you know, mom and pop folks per se, but if it's not user friendly off the bat, I'm just not going to waste my time because to me, uh, you know, less, less time trying to figure something out is more time for yourself. You know, and of course, well, you just bought a house and doing this, doing that. you know. There's only so many minutes, you know, like in the day. Yeah. But uh, well, you know what I mean. But uh, anyway, that's my thoughts. On, that's my buying advice for technology, folks. But um, anyway, I think we should wrap it up here. I think we've given the people a lot of information. Um, Spatry, thank you for joining me as always. Twill, it's great to have well, you no, back. Well, thank you. And yeah, thank, thank you for you. having me as well. Before yeah, we good, be, always good having you. Absolutely. Uh, Twill, before we wrap this up, why don't you give us a quick update on what the future plans are, maybe, with the channel, with your channel and stuff? Uh, well, um, life is still very hectic, at least for the next couple of months, because my, my little boy is just starting T-ball, just starting a new job where I'm having to spend lots and lots of time learning how to do everything. Uh, but uh, I'm still planning to make more videos for the XD Developers channel. That is actually a, a job for me. It's a staff position. Mm-hmm. Um, However, I, as time permits, do plan to make more videos on the Twill channel. I'm going to start off with some, you know, lighter things as I as I have the time. Maybe some distro reviews, some app reviews. Okay. Um, trying to avoid the the more in depth things like the the really long tutorial series that I got into yeah. for a while there. Uh, but uh, I, I can definitely see over the next few months trying to to start to rebuild this. Uh, this little legacy that I had before that has right. sadly sort of gone on hiatus. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I hear yeah, things you. are, are good yeah. here. Um, good. I, like I said, I did just start a new job, and that's going to be a, a lot of fun. I think uh, it's. Um, I don't. I don't know if I'm really allowed to go into who I work for. I've mentioned it in a video in the past, though. I'm working for Lexmark, uh, doing some Linux system administration work. Mm-hmm. So that should be uh, an an excellent challenge and a, a big right. change from the the usual for me. Well, I can say I, I have bought. Uh, Lexmark printers in the past, and they have always been 100% compatible with Linux. So there you go. I haven't had any problems. I, I've heard a lot of back and forth, but luckily yeah. I'm not on any sort of a team working with drivers. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's it's yeah. usually been the Canon stuff. Sorry, Canon. Although I got it working this time, but Lexmark, at least in the past, I I don't know about the new stuff. I I did buy a new Canon. Oh. Gee, I feel like a spokesman for Canon now. Canon yeah. MX360. Uh, download the driver. I got it right the first time, so it, so it does work. But, I mean, as, as far as Lexmark goes, from my personal experience, I haven't had issues yeah. in the past. Well, I, I will say that the little amount of time I've been there, I have noticed that there are a lot of people using Linux on the desktop. There are an amazing amount of Linux servers out there. there mm-hmm. There's also a lot of, like, Sol- Solaris and Unix and... Um, there might even be some Windows servers, but I'm not sure about that one. 
so it, it's kind of a nice mix. There are a lot of people using Mac, a lot of people still using Windows. So um, the the team that I'm working on, I think everybody's using uh, pretty much everybody's using Linux. There's a couple of cool. Windows guys. Cool. Deal. All right, Spatry, why don't you take us out? Ah, uh. <laughs> <laughs> he's boy, he's so excited. <laughs> he's like, oh, I'm so Ooh. tired. Oh uh, well, yeah, that's because my uh, that's because my uh, caffeine has wore off, and uh, <laughs> yeah, you know what? My, I, I my have... head's still twirling from looking at all these license agreements and different licenses, and uh, I got to get this video put together because oh, it's probably God. one of the most interesting requests that I've had. The differences between all these different licenses for software and that sort. Of Thing. So, all right. Well, hey, everybody, we appreciate you uh, joining us for, for this discussion. Thank you, Jordan, and thank you, uh, Total OS Today, and thank you, uh, all of you listening at home. And uh, we'll be back sometime in your Linux future. Absolutely. Twill, welcome back. And yes, Twill is still with us. He's doing fine, as he said. And all of us will keep you posted in the future. Thank you. Everybody say ciao. Ready? One, two, three. Ciao. Ciao. Bye-bye.